welcome, welcome everybody to another great episode of Real Life Matters. And of course, I am your host, D Boss. And I hope everybody is combining laughter into your daily regime, you know, because it, laughing is very important for you to do every day. It's good for your soul. It's good for releasing those endomorphins. It's good for blowing your blood pressure. It's also good for lowering, um, you know, reducing that little bit on your abs. I'm not saying stop going to the gym, but it does all that. And it also warms up your vocal cords. If you have to speak, you have to have a coaching engagement, you have singing. A lot of people say that they use that. And if you don't have anybody that you can laugh with, well, then go watch something. Call somebody. You know what I mean? You know, there's so much things you can do. But if you say, okay, you know what, d -boss, I don't have anybody at all that I can do these things with. Well, then you could sign up for laughing classes. So that, that's the last thing that you could do. But before I bring on my next guest, which would be kicking out something, I'm going to uh, we're gonna get here something from our sponsor, Vital Steps to Vital Health. And we'll be right back. Welcome to your Vital Steps to Better Health and Fitness. I'm Joanne James. Today we're going to talk about the effects of no exercise on the muscles. Many people are spending a lot of time sitting at their desk and not exercising, as well as the internet has taken people out of the exercise realm and into sitting down and playing games on their phones. There is a major detriment to not exercising. When you don't exercise, your muscles become weak and that impacts your bones. So now you have both weak muscles and weak bones. The other problem is you lose strength and the daily activities that you like to do become more difficult. So it's important to be doing some form of exercise to keep the muscles toned. And thirdly, your body composition will change. You will end up getting more body fat and less muscle mass, which then tends to be unattractive and you lose energy and you become more fatigued. So do yourself a favor. Get into a great exercise routine, find somebody who can put you on a great program, your body's going to love it. I'm Joanne James and this has been your Vital Steps to Better Health and Fitness. Take care. Well, thank you for that, Joanne <laughs> James. You know, Joanne James, you know, we, we do so much stuff lately. People are not getting up and moving around. So, you know, people need to do that extra bit. Go do your gym. Go do everything that you need to do. And, you know, you, you'll be fine after that. So anybody, I, I don't even want to ask this question. Everybody likes football. All kinds of football. So our guest today, he was, he, we're going to find out all about what he does and what he didn't do and what he wants to do. He was the first he played football. Now he coaches football and he manages um, the, uh, on the Toronto Argonauts. He also um, founded a foundation at a hospital in uh, 2006 in Uganda. Two, 200 schools, seven countries, orphanages in Haiti. And we're going to find out all about what he does and all the wonderful things he's doing. And we're going to find out all about him right now. So with no further ado, I introduce to you... We play it. No, Michael Pinball Clemens. D Boss. Oh, I'm I'm so happy to be with you and, and here with you. And uh, as you were talking about laughing, I once heard the most wasted day is one in which you haven't laughed. Right now, um, you, you you asked me. Wow. You know, uh, Talk, you, you asked me to talk about me a little bit, and and uh, what I found is if if you want to show me right a, a a true hero, right, a really important person, don't tell me about records or awards, money or power. If you want to show me a truly great person, show me what that person has done for someone else. Therein lies true greatness. 
So uh, today, uh, yes, I did play football, uh, played uh, uh, professionally uh, down in the NFL for one year and 12 years in Canada. Then I became the head coach of the team. And I was the first black, black head coach to win the championship. And, uh, and now I'm the general manager of the team and, and uh, um, won uh, an additional uh, championship uh, as, as the general manager. Uh, this year, though, right, we had the best record in the league, 16 wins, two losses. And we lost in the game before the championship game. So, you know, life always humbles you. It's always balance in life. Right. So here at Real Life Matters, we like to know where your background is and where you come from. All right. So originally, I, I was born in Florida. Uh, my mom was a single parent and uh, uh, she was 18 when she had me. And uh, uh, and with that, we, we uh, grew up in the projects and I grew up rich because I had everything that I needed. We, when we think of that, oh, you grew, grew up to a single parent or projects, I'm so sorry. No, I wouldn't trade my upbringing with anybody. Uh, my mom was everything I needed. My dad was a very good man too. And uh, he lived about an hour and a half away, was a school teacher. Um, and uh, he did a lot in the community that he lived in. And as a matter of fact, when he died, um, the, they did an article said, uh, Bradenton loses local hero. That was the name of the city. And, and so don't, don't want to take away from him. Uh, but um, he, he wasn't there because he didn't have to be because my mom uh, did such a great job uh, and, and uh, so, so grateful for her and that experience and, and grateful for my dad. He was the first uh, uh person to graduate from university uh, in his family. So that really, um, I think, gave me some vision and direction in terms of what I could be. Um, and so uh, just so grateful uh, to be here with you. And I, I love um, your presence uh, and, and, uh, and I love your philosophy, your belief in life. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. All right, so they call you Pinball. Where do they get that from? Yeah, so so I went for 24 years without a nickname. I was here one week, and we had this goal line scrimmage. So now that means there's one yard to go. And so I'm the new guy. And so this drill isn't for me. It's for the defense. So they want to practice right stopping people when they only have one yard to go and so they got we've got our first defense out there right and uh and all the rookies are over playing offense and so they're they're, they're going to practice being successful at this well i get hit like i was supposed to right and i didn't fall down i ran around the end and scored and this usually is a good thing but the coach is not concerned about these new rookies Wow. He's concerned about his defense. And so he gets mad. He says, do it again, right? And uh, so we did it again. And now this is totally unfair because everybody knows what's going on. Everybody knows what's happening. And and, uh, and when I uh, almost, when I get the ball, the ball is just about in my hand, the, 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 uh, the, the defensive guy just hits me, right? Because they know what's coming, right? He hits me again but I don't fall down again. I, I ran around the other end and I scored again. He says, you little guy, get out of my drill. And I, I never had to do what we call the scout team again. And, and uh, he said that we had this new guy that bounces around like a pinball and it stuck. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so you have accomplished so many things, you know, and what, what would you like to accomplished that to satisfy your career that you have um, uh, so for me, um, I, I, I don't believe that that anything worthwhile um, uh, is is done alone. 
so all, all the things that I've accomplished, uh, first of all, my mom uh, gave me so much guidance uh, um, a, as a young kid. And, and yes, I was good at sports at a very early age. Uh, when I was eight years old, uh, you can't, yeah, uh, you probably can tell I'm short here, but you don't know how short I'm. I'm only five five, and so uh, when my mom first took me to register, they said, "Oh, ma'am, I'm sorry." He's You're only five five. I thought you were taller. Yes, yes. So, so yes. Uh, so my uh, uh, in that when she took me to register, I uh, grew up in Florida there, and she she um, she said, "Ma'am, I'm I'm here to register my son," and she was so excited, and and uh, uh, the lady says, "Well, where is he?" So I was standing right beside her, but, but <laughs> all the little kids have to stand close to mom, right? The big kids are out running around say, he, he's got to be here in order to register, right? And she says, no, it, it, this is him. And she says, oh, I'm sorry, man. Uh, he has to be eight years old in order to play. She says, he is eight. She says, well, ma'am, and, and she was the nicest <laughs> lady, right? She says, well, ma'am, if, if he is eight, can you just bring him back when he's a little bigger? <laughs> right? So she says, you don't know this boy. He's got too much nervous energy. I, I don't care if he never gets in the game, right? But, but you're going to give him equipment and you're going to let him play, even if he has to run up and down the sidelines, right? So, so uh, by the time I was 11 years old, though, I had my jersey retired at a local restaurant. So um, I, I could always run. Uh, I, I like to say I was a glorified coward. I ran from people for a living, right? Uh, uh, but but uh, in saying that, uh, we, we um, uh, as as time went on, uh, we really um, you know uh, developed uh, an ability to to play competitively at, at different levels and and uh, uh, really had a, a, just a pure enjoyment uh, for the game and and then uh, it. it it turned into a career. I did uh, go to uh, the College of William and Mary in Virginia, um, and uh, uh, but and at that point, I still thought that I wasn't going to be able to play professionally. Um, as I mentioned, this five-five frame, and uh, but I did get drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs, um, and I played a year there before coming up to Canada and played twelve years in Canada. Uh, but the, I think the more interesting part is. Uh, my mom was really grounded, and I, I, I went to more of an academic school. It's the second oldest school behind Harvard, and I had interned at a company called Honey, Honeywell. So I worked on the hand and flight controls for the space shuttle one year and an unmanned space vehicle called Space Shuttle Centaur the other two years. And, and, uh, and, and, and really, I speak to that. Right. Um, because of my mom and who she was and what she did and, and how she inspired and encouraged me. Nothing worthwhile is done by yourself. Well, you're inspiring because it doesn't matter how small you are. People shouldn't judge, take that into judgment. They should just say, OK, if you want to play this or do this, it's not it's not discrimination. Let's go do it. Let's that's it. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, right, and 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 you really respect the fact fact that the lady was really interested in in my health, and and, and uh, so those things are important. But but you know, Bar Barack Obama, I think, had a sign in his office says, "Hard things are hard." Right. They're supposed to be right. And, and uh, but but the idea here is we can do hard things. So, uh, you know, let's let, let you know, we, we don't allow those things, as you say, to define us. Right. And uh, um, but our real joy, um, uh, again, is is service. And we've been very fortunate to build over 200 classrooms in, in developing countries. Um, and um, uh, as well as you mentioned, we, we uh, um, uh, built a hospital in Uganda and, and, uh, uh, and we also, also built a couple of orphanages. Uh, but now we're working in, in our local community uh, quite a bit. And we um, are working with marginalized and racialized youth and we uh, very fortunately, are, are, are in a position where now we mentor some 3,000 young people who go into a job every year. Uh, it, that, that's in a, uh, an wow. IT program. Uh, we have another program. Uh, IT, okay. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. And so so we have another program that, uh, in trades and, and an additional one in admin. And that's another couple of hundred kids uh, that we mentor and they go straight into a job uh, after afterwards. We also pay for books and tuition for another hundred kids. Um, and uh, I say kids, uh, young people. <laughs> so I'm getting so old now. So so. Uh, um, but we met, we uh, we mentor another uh, 100 people um, uh, in in uh, in trades and another hundred, a uh, little bit even more than that. I think that that part is growing in in, uh, um, in another program uh, that we run uh, that that is a, a, around uh, communication. So so yeah, so we, we we try to keep busy and try to to. To serve our young oh, you're people, you're very busy. Give them a platform. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, we're thankful. Yes, yeah, so uh, we have a great team. The, the the work is well, very well distributed. And uh, and the other program I was mentioning is is admin program. I couldn't get it out, so it's an administration program that we have as well. And that that reaches about 200 young people that get, get a chance. They're micro credential programs, so they're 15 week programs that go directly into a job. Oh. Yeah. oh, okay. So where do they have to go? Do they register for this? Or are you, or you, are you offering this in Africa or somewhere else or in Canada? Where do you offer the programs? So, so these, these programs are, are more locally and, and, uh, rather than the global imprint. Uh, hopefully one day we will be able to go outside of our bounds and uh, be able to do some of this. And and it is very realistic because we a lot of the work we do, um, we we uh, do digitally, right? So so young people can just log in, uh, but we don't have, have the relationship oh, okay. with business in other places, right? So um, the, we, we need to make sure then that not only can we train them, but we can give them uh, the real opportunity. Can, we can give them a job afterwards. So, so hopefully over time, we'll be able to develop some of those relationships outside of our borders. Okay. So the courses that you offer, are they accredited or? They are. They, they, are, they, they get a are. certificate so, at the end of it. Yes, yeah, so so they're they're right with the college in in two of the circumstances and and uh, and then the trades program is a specialized program uh, that's that's run through uh, the Central Ontario Building Trades here in Ontario. Okay, all right. Well, we know about all what you're doing, and you got to come back again and let us know updates of what you're doing. All right. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, if you do live uh, in the Toronto area, uh, we do have a Christmas concert coming up on December 6th at Roy Thompson Hall. It's called Christmas with the Clemens. It's our seventh annual and proceeds from the event do go to support our young people. So December 6th at 7 p.m. Doors open at 6. Wow. So we'll it's at Roy Thompson Hall. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> so that's so it's um what age what age group is the christmas is, is that for everybody or yes it's just it's a christmas show it's for everybody uh my bride actually is a singer so she uh she will be uh, uh one of the featured guests and then we have several uh um uh, artists that will be joining us uh glenn lewis uh um, carl wolf who is uh very known uh very well known in in uh, north america um and uh we we have several other other people that will I be, know uh, him. ah very good very good excellent excellent so um, uh, we've got Simone Denny and, and uh, many others that will be joining us. A local favorite is Pastor Brown. And, and I think one of the most effervescent people I know, uh, just energy everywhere, Sean Jones. And, and so uh, he will be joining us. And so it will be a tremendous uh, night. Uh, again, December 6th at 7 p.m. is the start time. All right, now how much is it to go with tickets? 
Uh, you, you know, um, there are some good tickets that are available. I wish I knew the actual starting price. I should know that, uh, but 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 I don't. Um, uh, I I, uh, I I think um, I think fifty dollars is is around the, the the starting price, and 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 again, a portion of the proceeds okay. uh, uh, will be going to the foundation. Oh, okay. So people give them, and we'll, we'll also support that. It's a good cause. Yeah. So. Yes. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Right. So, are there any shout outs? Any shout outs that you want to give? Um, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Say, I, I, I missed that. Oh, are there any shout outs that you want to give, Michael? Oh, you know what? I want to give a big shout out to all of our team and our extended team. So uh, the foundation and all the work that's being done, uh, they, they do such a great job. And then we have so many great partners that come alongside of us. Uh, and so I want to just give a big shout out and, and uh, a big thank you to them. And, and uh, we're so proud and grateful. And uh, Tay did. Okay. And where can people? Yes. And I was going to say Tay Diggs uh, okay. is going to be so our MC. Anywhere... Yes. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Say, uh, so oh. Tay Diggs, the actor Tay Diggs, is, is, is going to be our MC for the evening. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Good wow. stuff. Wow. Mm hmm. Good. But what did you do? You had you had to put a lot of um, coin in front of him to come. Uh, you you know um, it was a nice thing. He's doing something at the children's hospital. Yes, yeah, so uh, so he's he's doing something for uh, for young wow. people um, who are in in uh, uh, sick kids hospital, and and so uh, he's here to do to do that, okay. and and uh, has agreed to come alongside of us in in the program that we're doing. Well, I wish you guys all the best in the program, and um, you know, and everything that's going on. So. Obviously, off when the program is finished, the Christmas um, thing is finished, then you'll be continuing on with the courses. So where can people find you guys on social media? All right. ChristmasWithTheClemens.ca. That's ChristmasWithTheClemens. Clemens spelled C-L-E-M-O-N-S dot C-A. Well, I'm going to come on Spank Christmas with the Clemens, too. All right. Yes. That's awesome. That's phenomenal. All right. Well, well, that's a real treat and we'll make sure that we treat you well. People, if you want to join Christmas with the Clemens, you guys, you don't have anywhere to go. The door is open. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> uh, well, thank you. You are absolutely amazing. Effervescent. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I do want to thank you. Thank you. Thank All right. you. All right. I do want to thank everybody for watching me here with Michael Pinball Clemens. And he's doing a lot of great things. So you guys got to go to Christmas with the Clemens, you know, dot, it's dot com or dot ca? Dot ca. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. Dot ca. All right, I do want to right. everybody goodbye for now. All right, take care. Bye now. Very good. And thank you so much.